Join me this October where I'll be celebrating Halloween. 31 zine reviews in 31 days. Joining me will be my friend Beanie. Hi, welcome to another edition of Halloween. With me, as always, is Beanie. Beanie, how are you doing today? <laughs> right on. Uh, today, we are going to be reviewing Nightland by Vasily Kalaman. Uh, I apologize if I don't pronounce that right. Um, feel free to reach out to me and let me know, and I'll try to correct it as best I can. Uh, Nightland, which you can see by the art on it, it's a kind of, it really actually reminds me of uh, a Troika style game. And uh, you can see it's an old school essential uh, compatible game. And if you just look at the, the artwork and it's kind of like a fantastical night uh, or land of night. And you can just see there's like kind of permanent dusk to it. So we'll get into that right away. Uh, here on the inside cover is a uh, map of Nightland, and we won't get into that because there's a, a, another map on the, um, the inside pages, but it, it's very well drawn. Uh, I just it kind of evokes that kind of fantasy world that I think a lot of young people like to draw, and it just kind of has a nice feel to it. Uh, once again, this is uh, compatible with OSE, and it is published by Singing Flame who also has another, uh, a couple other really good products. Uh, DNGN uh, is one of them that uh, looks really awesome. So uh, the risograph uh, um, imagery on that is cool. So the art is by Andrew Walter in this one and the cartography by Benjamin Mara. So what do you need to play? Uh, Nightland is a weird fantasy setting for original fantasy and OSR rule systems. It can be run as a standalone or plugged into your current campaign world as a location players experience during an adventure. The stats within are suitable for character levels two through three, and, but they can be adjusted accordingly. Once again, old school essentials, any classic kind of fantasy. Um, what is Nightland itself? Well, it is a realm where the sun has extinguished and its ashes lay strewn across the landscape. One after one, the stars in the universe are entering their ultimate stages of life, and existence is evaporating into memory. Nightland may take place far in the future, or even in the past. It is a dreamlike realm existing without plot, which referees can weave into their will. Uh, the art by Andrew Walter should be used to stimulate the referee and player's imagination. So this is a point crawl um, system, and uh, there's a number of hooks that they recommend. Uh, it could be a dream, it could be a portal, or it could be that the uh, party is on a path and all of a sudden at dusk, they enter into this world that they almost get transported into. So it's a, kind of an interesting way to get in there. Um, traveling between locations are paths and it's recommended that players stay on the paths because leaving the paths is never a good thing, especially with so much ash strewn about uh, from the uh, sun. And um, so there's different ways. There's like random encounters and that kind of thing to keep them on path. Uh, illumination, because it's permanently kind of dusk, uh, you can use um, sun sprites, which are uh, magical creatures within the world to light your way. And uh, there are also links between all the relationships with the locations and all the different factions. And uh, the overall uh, feel, feel of it, the uh, theme of it is melancholy, world weariness, wounded innocence, reflection, entropy, exhaustion, romanticism, idealism, and hope. And eventually you can leave the Nightland through, uh, you know, obviously it's up to the referee of like how you got into Nightland and how you leave Nightland, but there's some suggestions there. Uh, once again, uh, very cool art. Um, that has very Troika-esque vibes. Let's talk about some of the factions. So we have the Sun Mourners who are uh, on a ceaseless quest uh, to collect the remaining embers of the extinguished sun. The spells transform these fragments into a myriad of variations of magical sunstones. 
They serve as traveling preachers performing continuous odes to uh, keep the memory of the fallen son alive. They seek to open the hearts and minds of the authentic nature of loss and grief. Now we have the uh, Necrodivas, which are uh, charismatic sorceresses, elegant, fearsome, without a soul. In relentless search of adulation, each Necrodiva is served by a love-struck entourage, convinced she alone can replace the sun in the hearts of the people of Nightland. Then we have the Void Engineers. Uh, it's more of an ideology than a faction. The Void Engineers are convinced the sun can be restored and are committed to the task. They have constructed several sun replacements, each catastrophic failure. Uh, the little is understood of their secretive organization other than that they arose from the remnants of the deposed ruler. And there is a table of random events and encounters. So you've got your D100 uh, here. Let's just roll one for the fun of it. 15, Sun Mourners. Okay. Here's some other evocative art. And here is the portal into the sunny world, it appears. So uh, once again, the world is basically shrouded in twilight. Um, and here is the entrance to Nightland. It's a 30 foot diameter pit uh, that interrupts the path shooting downward into darkness. If the edges are surveyed, flashes of radiant color sparkle within rising like soap bubbles. Miniature sphere is emerging a solid uh, one for each party member depicting scenes from the PC's past composed of moving images and sound. So there you go. That is what it looks like. And then in uh, section two, let's just skip here so we can kind of see where we're at. So we have the entrance here, and then the sun mourners, traders, hypercube, temple, home there is a lake there fog and skies there's a citadel necrodivas children of rain the gardens the crater a storm and a star map amongst there's lots more to this but I just just to give you a lay of the land i uh, really like this art uh, mimics what's on the, the inside flap so let's go back to um we got the necro no, let's go back even further. So we got the Sun Mourners, which we've talked about as a faction in section two, and then Traders, a merchant caravan with items for sale and paths to locations. The skies, extraordinary phenomena in the heavens, paths to locations eight and 12. Within the clearing, an ash golem sits feasting on lacerated humans. Geothermal features such as geysers and hot mud pools are nearby. Ash columns, love that. Um, you know, and that's always like good writing when you kind of lean into the location. There's the vanishing hypercube, an enigmatic and unknowable object passed to locations to three and 10. Uh, the unearthed tome, a newly discovered tome, dispersed at the foot of an escarpment are the remains and encampment. The area is littered with foodstuffs and ruined equipment. The ambient illumination reveals a nearby pool of gurgling, gurgling ash and mud. And then we have the uh, Necrodivas area, a ladder made of hair reaching to another plane. Mm, interesting. So there are 1D10 plus 20 divas there. They dwell in simple huts laid out in a circle, smooth as polished marble composed of solidified sound. Then in uh, eight is the Lake of Redemption, a body of water used for baptisms and funerals. The Rainbow Citadel, it's a structure built by void engineers. The dismal plain comprises thousands of sculpted megalithic heads arranged in a well-defined sense of order. Many have open mouths, a humanoid can enter. Amid the heads rises a citadel of staggering architectural craftsmanship covered in an array of gears, levers, and cogs. Hence the uh, void engineers. Number 10 is the Temple of Eternal Flame. A flame that burns eternally at the foot of an unscalable plateau stands a temple. Numerous pilgrims flock here to celebrate the last eternal flame in Nightland. They pray to a statue of the Sun Slayers, 
uh, within a temple once a day, the sojourners uh, enact a ritual where they construct an effigy of the sun slayer from a stitched body parts of the dead. Mm. They sacrifice the effigy in the internal flame, which burns outside the temple. And the children of the rain, here rises a honeycomb spire formed of a solidified noise. It is controlled by a female tea cult called the children of rain. Being composed of pure water, draped in dazzling robes, they are idolized by 1D10 plus 6 radiance beggars. Once again, very evocative art. There's, uh, looks like a teapot. So this must be the children of the rain. And uh, we are now at the inside pages, which I always like if you're doing a saddle stitch books, uh, to have that inside be something spectacular and uh, something that is easy to get to. Uh, the fog nestled within the valley is a region thickly shrouded in blue fog. While most travelers pass through without incident, many go missing each year, vanishing without a trace. Mm. The crater of eternal recurrence. Here is an awe-inspiring crater etched deep into the ground, a mile in diameter. The surrounding atmosphere shimmers with a pulsing mag uh, magenta illumination. The storm of tainted sorcery. A continuous storm lasting a 1D 10 plus 10 minutes per hour, inducing any metal objects to arc with an erratic blue ed energy. The tea gardens. This is a beautifully manicured classical garden brimming with diverse varieties of enchanted tea plants. The pit of, uh, okay, I'm going to take a run at this. Uh, pit of Rasko, Raskolnikov. Rask I can say it better than that. Let's get another run at this. The pit of Raskolnikov. There we go. The pit of Raskolnikov. A path within the tea gardens, a despairing grid scavenger seen ahead dumping a barrel of human body parts into a pit 30 feet in diameter and 10 foot deep. The close examination reveals this is a putrid cavity in which the lives of celebrated moralist, logician, nihilist, and satirist uh, Raskol, <laughs> Raskol, Raskolnikov, who is a magic user, um, appears to be buried. Okay. So there's also a table of uh, rumors and cult names and class names. So let's uh, do a quick rumor just to see what's going on here. 95. Tea drinking is a popular pastime here. Cult names. We've got uh, D10. So we got a six, the Society of Summoners. And their specialty is telepaths. They've got some uh, class names. So once again, D10. So we've got Saga, Saga Avenger. Oh, that's a D20. <laughs> well, you get the idea. Uh, so you've got some residents, um, then their name, skills, motivation, spice, possession. Here's a D100 table of loot. And then various sunstones. So it looks like uh, there's some magic items, each one with their own kind of um, power. So just to read off a couple, victim collapses into a stupor and is compelled to answer one question truthfully. Um, you can summon some, in this one, number three, stones of incandescent manifestation, summon 1D10 sun sprites to help you on your journey. Let's uh, go to uh, stones of sorcerous evaporation, causes small, non-living, non-magical objects made of metal or wood to vanish for 1D6 hours. They reappear after that time has lapsed. Cool. Uh, song spells, ashen replicant, distill noise. So as you said or saw, there, there were some uh, objects or um, buildings made out of um, solidified sound. So you can see that these might play into how the uh, spells and the songs work together. And then we have our bestiary, bestiary. We have an ash golem. We have a faceless drifter. A shadow walker. Sun sprites. Uh, quantum blinker. A winged beheader, love the tail. And Twilight Vermin. So 
kind of fun kind of vermin that you can randomly roll. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's a relationship matrix. So if you've got your Necrodivas and your, uh, let's see, who can they, uh, Necrodivas and Void Engineers. Uh, the Divas are cynical of the engineers. And so you have your, uh, let's see, another one that would be good to look at. The Sun Mourners. And how do they react to the Necrodivas? Uh, Corrupted sun mourners are spying for Necrodivas who offer depraved pleasures in return. And then finally, we have the open game license on the uh, the back page. And uh, that's it. Visit uh, singingflame.com. As mentioned, they've got some other really interesting books. And uh, this one is a really good adventure for your OSE if you want to drop it in as a bit of a trade or a difference uh, from a dungeon. And um, you can check it out. Uh, we'll put all the links in the description. And once again, we're less than a week away from our live stream draw of a $200 store credit from Exalted Funeral, as well as some other prizes. So be sure to enter at IQGames.com. Happy Halloween, ladies. <laughs>